Hello everyone and welcome to another subquery project where I'm going to talk about aggregation. So in this project what I want to do is query for all the staking rewards there are in Polkadot mainnet. After that I want to aggregate or sum or add together all the rewards for a particular account. So let's see how we can do this. First of all we'll jump into Visual Studio Code and we're going to start off by creating the starter project. So I'm following a workbook here where I'll put the link down below. The first step is to initialize the project and we'll call this uh, staking reward with an S and we'll just accept the defaults here. And you can see on the left hand side we've got the scaffold created for us. Now as always the first thing that we want to do is jump into the schema file and define the shape of our data. So what I'm going to do here is let's delete the template starter entity and I'm going to copy in and save an entity called staking reward. Now this entity or object or basically it's a database table is going to contain a handful of fields. We've got the ID which is the primary key comprised of the block height hyphen event ID that is to ensure that it's unique. We're also going to have account which is the Polkadot crypto address. The balance is the amount of dot that is there and been obtained via a reward. The date the reward happened and of course we're going to use a block height. Always good to know the height that the event has occurred in. Next up let's jump into our project YAML or our manifest file. What I want to do here is define a new handler. So we're going to delete all of the default here and I'm going to paste this one in. This one is going to be called handle staking rewarded and I'm going to filter on a module called staking and a method called rewarded. So this is where the information lies and with this filter it means that my project won't have to go through every single block in the blockchain to grab the data. It will jump to the specific blocks making this project a lot quicker. Now quick note that in the past this was actually called reward and since around block 6.7 million onwards it's been updated to be called rewarded. Next up let's jump into our mappings file because this is where we're doing our transformation. I want to go ahead and delete the existing example functions and let's add in my own one here. Remember this is called handle staking rewarded which is the same as the manifest file that I had here. This value. And then inside the first thing I want to do is get access to the event parameter or, or argument that's been passed through in this particular function. So this event here is defined here and the data as an array is going to be comprised of account and new reward. So this is the crypto account and this will be where we store our balance. Next up I'm going to create a variable called entity. Again it could be anything of your choice and instantiate a new instance of our entity and I'm going to pass through the block height dash and the event ID as a primary key. So I can show you what this means by first of all if I do a yarn code gen to generate the TypeScript here. I'll first of all run yarn install and now I can then run yarn code gen and this is going to generate the TypeScripts. On the left hand side here create the staking rewards TypeScript and if I open this you'll see that the constructor here 
is the actual ID of type string. And this is the ID which is going to be my primary key. So because I've gone ahead and generated the code, I can also import instead of the starter entity. This is going to be called staking reward. And I can delete extrinsic. I'm not going to use that. And also substrate block as well. So things are looking good here. Let's go ahead and grab the various parameters here. We've got the entity account. We've got the balance, the date. And let me go in and do entity.blockHeight equal. And I'm going to copy this across down here to number as well. Okay, so the only thing remaining now is to go ahead and build the code. And then we'll pull down the Docker container. And then we shall spin up the environment. This will take a minute or two. And then after that, we can go ahead and run a, an example query. Okay, so our node has started. We're also fetching blocks. Ah, I'm actually fetching blocks from block one, which is not what I want to do. So let me stop this. One thing I did forget to do is in my project manifest file, I actually want to start at block seven million. So let me save this. Now, because I've already started indexing blocks, my database is going to know the current block height. So I'm going to have to delete my database, Postgres up here, and then run the docker compose up command again. So you can see here again, my node has started. I'm indexing blocks as well. So let's go ahead into our browser and we'll open up the playground. You can see I've got a previous query in cache here. Let me go ahead and delete this. And I'm going to paste in this particular query. Hit run. And you can see I've got the results coming back. So what I'm doing here is querying for my staking rewards. And I'm obtaining the current block height, the account, the date, and the balance of those rewards. So again, if I remove the first three, you'll see I'm going to get quite a large number of data coming back. So this is great in that it's proof that the code is working, but it's not going to answer our aggregation function yet because what we want to do is query for, say, this particular account and out of all the balances that there are, aggregate or sum them together. So let's cover this in part two of this project in the next video.